For centuries, Halliburton Highlands was used as hunting grounds for the Algonquin and Iroquois natives. However, once government legislation was enacted in 1852, it took less than a decade to transform a serene location on the Gull River to a thriving village called Minden. Minden's history really begins in 1852 when William Lyon Mackenzie asked the Legislative Assembly for a survey of the uh, Huron-Ottawa territories. This was principally to increase settlement within the province and encourage immigration from Europe, but also to discourage emigration to other provinces and to the United States. In 1853, the Public Land Act was passed by the legislature. This act allowed the government to appropriate as free grants any public lands in the province to actual settlers upon or in the vicinity of any public roads in any new settlement which shall or may be opened through the lands of the Crown. To get a land grant, one had to be at least 18 years of age, build a 16 foot by 20 foot home within a year, clear at least 12 acres of land, reside on the land for at least five years, and in many cases, the settlers had to agree to work on the colonization road as payment for that land grant. Over the next 20 years, 1,600 kilometers of roads were built to provide access to these land grants. The first settlers in this area would traditionally have built a camp, a tent with no floors, and then construction would begin. A small wooden structure would usually be built first and the family would live in that until the house was built. The original structure would become the barn. The home was usually a log-hewn structure from pine or hardwood in the area and there was little machinery so most of the work had to be done by hand. Many settlers were disillusioned over the fact that the winters were long and harsh and the soil conditions were not conducive to crops. Pioneer life revolved around food, growing it, shooting it, trapping it, or even trading it. Settlers had to grow enough food to both survive and feed their animals. The cows, the pigs, poultry, the work animals such as the oxen. The invention of canning in 1850 was an enormous help to these settlers. Whatever could be made was soap, utensils, clothing, wagons, plows, pails, plates, toys, even shoes. The list is endless. It was a serious problem to be without fire. A fire had to be kept burning constantly because it was very difficult to start a fire over and over again. Light was usually provided by candles or at times even by using a cup of grease with a string in it. There was little, if any, access to doctors or medication, and plants and herbs were used instead. Something as simple as a cold could lead to a fatal illness. Life expectancy was shorter than those who lived in cities and towns, and death was not uncommon, especially in children. In 1888, diphtheria fell on Halliburton County, and many children succumbed to the plague during that winter. In 1858, surveyor Michael Dean was commissioned by the Department of Crown Lands to conduct a survey of lots along a proposed road beginning just north of Kinmount. This line became the Bob Cajun Road and ran directly through the village of Gull River. The Bob Cajun Road was the first of the colonization roads to penetrate Halliburton County from the south. At a cost of $49,363, it started in Bob Cajun and ran a total of 65 miles. Later, J.W. Fitzgerald was sent to the area to survey the settlement. He reported, This township is now being settled by an industrious and intelligent class of people, composed chiefly of immigrants who have acquired a good knowledge of Canadian life. In 1859, the settlers petitioned the Governor General of the Province of Canada for a name change. And on April 1st of that year, the village of Gull River was renamed Minden Township. The name was selected in dedication of the victory of the English and Germans over the French in 1756 at the Battle of Minden in Germany. Francis Kent, Minden's first settler, was selected as Minden's first postmaster, but declined the position and tavern owner Daniel Buck consequently was appointed. Now, Buck's tavern and the post office were in the same location, and shortly afterwards, Buck was removed from his position as postmaster for serving liquor in the post office. 
In 1859, land grants increased the population of Minden rapidly. By 1871, less than 12 years later, the population of Minden had reached 850, a 1600% increase. In 1874, Minden became the county seat for Halliburton County. By 1900, the village was prosperous. There were stores, taverns, and businesses along the main street. Land was no longer being granted but purchased, and many churches and schools had been built. What's more, a booming logging industry had developed and was providing significant economic growth to the village. Minden witnessed several floods, and fires raised large portions of the village in 1879 and 1890. But that survival instinct, the same one we saw in the early settlers, allowed the community to be renewed time and time again. It is hard to imagine the village of Gull River, Ontario, a Minden without a main street, or a bridge for that matter. But if you look closely, beyond the cars and the parking spaces, remnants of Gull River still exist. It exists on the main street, it exists in our culture, and it exists in the Minden Hills Museum. But most of all, it exists in the ancestors of those who first settled this town.